So let's continue the process of analyzing pedigrees. So, so far we discussed pedigrees that describe diseases that are sex-linked recessive. We also looked at those pedigrees that describe autosomal recessive traits. Now let's take a look at the following pedigree that will describe autosomal dominant traits. So what we want to basically show in this lecture is that whatever the disease is that is described by this pedigree, it cannot be sex-linked dominant and it cannot be sex-linked recessive. And, and we want to show that this could be autosomal dominant. So show that the disease described by the following pedigree cannot be sex-linked recessive and sex-linked dominant. So as always, to show that it's not something, we have to begin by assuming that it is that. So let's begin by assuming that it is sex-linked, let's say, recessive. So it's sex-linked recessive. And what that basically means is we have an X, uppercase B, that basically describes the normal gene and then we have the X lowercase b that describes the gene for that disease. Okay, so if this were true, if it is sex-linked recessive, then what that means is this female individual must be X lowercase b, X lowercase b. And this individual, because it's a male and it's normal, that means we must have X uppercase B and Y. So let's actually carry out the following crossing process between these two individuals and let's discuss what the distribution is of the genotypes of the offspring produced and let's see if that's consistent with information given to us in this pedigree. So remember, this is generation one, these are the individuals of generation two, and these are the individuals of generation three. So we have this individual produces either this sperm cell or this sperm cell. This produces only one type of X cell, X lowercase b. So let's continue this Punnett square. So we basically have X uppercase B, X lowercase B. We have X uppercase B, X lowercase B. We have X uppercase B, Y, X uppercase B, Y. Now notice what this Punnett square is telling us. It tells us that 100% of the offspring that are produced, the male offspring, so this one and this one, must actually exhibit that particular disease phenotype because we have X lowercase b y and X lowercase b y. Now that is consistent with this individual because this individual must be X lowercase b y to actually display that disease phenotype. But this individual does not display that phenotype. It is male, so that means it must be X uppercase b y. And this genotype cannot exist if we cross these two individuals as shown in the following Punnett square. And so what that means is this pedigree cannot describe a disease that is sex-linked recessive. So it can't be sex-linked recessive as a result of this inconsistency between the pedigree analysis and the Punnett square analysis. So let's continue and let's move on to the sex-linked dominant. And let's show that this cannot be sex-linked dominant. So it can't be this. So let's put an X over A. What about B? Now let's assume that it's sex-linked dominant. Can it be sex-linked dominant? Well, if it's sex-linked dominant, what that means is this individual, so this individual will have the disease, will have the phenotype of that disease. This individual will have the phenotype of that disease. And it also means that <clears throat> this individual will also have the disease for that particular, uh, uh, the phenotype for that particular disease. All other individuals, so we have, um, we have X lowercase b, Y, 
and x lowercase b, x lowercase b, these individuals will be normal. So with this in mind, let's fill out the following pedigree. So we have a male that is normal, and the only time that a male is normal is this right over here. So we have x lowercase b and y. And here we also have a normal male, so this must be x lowercase by. This, by the same reasoning, must be x lowercase by. And this must be x uh, lowercase by. This must be x lowercase b and y. The only time that a female is normal is when they have this particular genotype. So we have a normal female here. That means we have x lowercase by, x lowercase by. This is a normal female as well. This is a normal female. And this is a normal female. Okay? And then we have uh, the other one. So here we have a male that, <coughs> that carries, that has that phenotype and that disease. So that means it's uppercase B and Y. This one must also be X uppercase B and Y. This must be X uppercase B, Y. Now this individual and this individual can either be this trait or this trait because we have two different possibilities. So let's actually carry out the put and square to see if these are possible right over here. So the choices here are either x uppercase b x uppercase b or we have x uppercase b x lowercase b and here the choices are also x uppercase b, x uppercase b, or x uppercase b, x lowercase b. Um, okay, so let's move on to this one right over here. So we're crossing this one with this one. Let's see what we produce. So let's assume that, first let's assume that the individual is this right over here. Uh, if the individual was this, then we have the X cell, so one type of X cell, which is that, and then we have this type of sperm cell, or this one, from the male parent. And so if we carry out this crossing process, we get X uppercase B, X lowercase B, X uppercase B, X lowercase B. Um, okay, and actually, we don't have to do, well, yeah, let's continue, let's finish this up. So X, B, Y, X, B, Y. So from this information, what this tells us is every single individual produced in this case must carry that particular phenotype for that disease. And we know that is not consistent with the information that is given to us because these two individuals don't carry that particular phenotype as described by this pun and square. So we know it cannot be this genotype here. So, okay, now we know that. Let's continue to the next one. Let's suppose the genotype is in fact this one right over here. So now let's carry out the pun and square for that. So we have X uppercase B, we have X lowercase B, and we have X lowercase B Y for our sperm cells. Here we have X uppercase B, we have X lowercase B, X lowercase B, X lowercase B, X uppercase B, Y, X lowercase B, Y. Okay, so this actually makes sense because we have a 25 chance that, a 25% chance that this individual is formed, which we have right over here. We have a 25% chance that this individual is formed and a 25% chance that this individual is formed and that's consistent with these individuals in the following pedigree. So that works as long as this is this individual right over here. Okay, now let's move on to this case. We have X uppercase B Y, X lowercase B, X lowercase B. If we carry out the pun and square, we'll see that these individuals do in fact work. So because X B can be donated by one parent, X B can be donated by the other parent, so we can in fact form this individual. 
And likewise, if the Y is donated by the male parent, XB is donated by the other one, we form this individual right over here. Okay, so to determine if it is sex linked dominant, we have to show that all these actually make sense. So we're crossing this individual with this individual. So what do we get? Well, we have X, uppercase B, and Y. So from this individual, we have X, lowercase b, X, lowercase b. And so when we cross, we get X, low, uh, uppercase b, lowercase b, X, uppercase b, X, lowercase b. Uh, and right away, we should see that there, that's a problem. And that's a problem because we form this female right over here. So according to the pedigree, we have this female individual that contains both lowercase b's on both of those X chromosomes. But in this particular Punnett square, we see that is impossible because 100% of those females must be heterozygous and so they must express that disease, that phenotype, and that is inconsistent with this particular uh, information. And so it cannot be sex-linked dominant. So we basically answered our question. Now we want to show that it could be uh, autosomal dominant. So. Let's remove all these, uh, all the scrap work that we did to basically show that it wasn't sex linked. And now we're going to follow the same exact step to show that it is, um, it could be autosomal dominant. Um, so I guess we can, uh, let's close this out. Okay, so hopefully you wrote that information down or you can rewind it if you like. Okay, so we want to now show that it is possible, this pedigree this can describe autosomal dominant. And what that means is, um, So uppercase B, uppercase B, or uppercase B, lowercase B, will basically describe that disease gene. Or disease, uh, it will describe, I should say, the disease phenotype. Okay? And the only time we don't have a uh, phenotype for the disease is lowercase B, lowercase B. Okay, so we don't have a disease here, so this must be lowercase b, lowercase b, this must be lowercase b, lowercase b, this must be lowercase b, lowercase b, so every one that appears normal basically is lowercase b, lowercase b. So this one is lowercase b, and this one is lowercase b as well. Now, all the ones that have disease are either this or that. So this can be either uppercase b, uppercase B, or it can be uppercase B, lowercase B. This can be uppercase B, uppercase B, or uppercase B, lowercase B. This one is uppercase B, uppercase B, or lowercase B, lowercase B. And the same thing with uh, these two. Okay, so these are kind of the possibilities of our uh, genotype. So let's actually pick one and see that they are consistent. So let's begin with these two phenotypes here. So when we cross BB with BB, the only type of phenotype that we form is obviously lowercase b, lowercase b. And that is absolutely consistent with these two individuals here. As both of the individuals don't show that disease phenotype, and so they're lowercase, lowercase b, lowercase b. So this actually works out. What about this case? Well, notice that this individual cannot be uppercase B, uppercase B, because if it were uppercase B, uppercase B, what that means is these two individuals would be heterozygous. And so that is not true. What about if it's this? Well, if it's this, then we have B, B, we have lowercase B, lowercase B, and so what this would produce is 
it would it would produce 50% heterozygous so 50% heterozygous and 50% homozygous recessive and that is consistent with our results we see that the only time uh, this works out is if this individual's lowercase uh, uppercase b lowercase v in that case this works out this works out and this also works out and this must be this individual it can't be that homozygous dominant so now we have uppercase b lowercase b that is crossed with lowercase b lowercase b so let's say uppercase b uppercase b nope that is not true so now we want to basically show this one so we have the male individual uppercase b lowercase b those are the sperm cells and these are the x cells lowercase b lowercase b and so we have the following maiden process take place and we have lowercase b up uh we have heterozygous and we have homozygous recessive and so these are the possibilities of these offspring right over here so we have vb which is consistent with this one and is consistent with um this one right over here so this should have been vb and the other case is this one which is once again consistent with these cases as long as we assume that it can't be this it can't be this and it can't be this so what we just